Okay, in chapter 12, we are going to talk about the cell cycle, which you are probably um, more familiar with mitosis, which is one small part of the cell cycle, uh, but we're going to look in detail at the rest of the cell cycle during this chapter. So, the ability of an organism to produce more of their own kind best distinguishes living things from non-living matter. So, in other words, reproduction, or if you were a unicellular organism, cell division is, um, is key to your being considered an organism in terms of how scientists think. So this represents a beautiful depiction, colorful, of cell division from the beginning, where we have one cell over here in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, all of the chromosomes are visible in chromatin. They start to condense. They line up in the middle. They start to separate. They um, eventually form two cells where the nucleus looks very similar to this one that begins, begins a cycle. And these two cells are, in fact, genetically identical to the parent cell that we started with. We call these two cells over here daughter cells. In unicellular organisms, the division of one cell reproduces the entire organism. So if you're a unicellular and you reproduce, you have um, you have made an entirely new clone of yourself. But multicellular organisms use cell division for a bunch of different reasons. So um, growth and repair, healing, in other words, are two similar, uh, or two reasons that you should be familiar with, and also development from a fertilized cell. So if you recall, once the sperm and the egg unite, forming a zygote. That zygote then divides by cell division or by mitosis until it is a fully formed human being. Cell division is an integral part of the cell cycle, uh, which is the life cycle of a cell from formation to its own division. So here we have um, picture A shows two cells or a cell reproducing, making a copy of itself. B shows two cells growing, so you got one cell adding another cell. And tissue C shows, or tissue slide C here shows tissue renewal, or in other words, healing. So most cell division is going to result in daughter cells that are genetically identical or contain identical DNA. Uh, the exception is meiosis, because meiosis, if you recall, produces sperm and egg cells, and they only have half of the genetic material than the original cell. So we're going to focus on mitosis here. Okay, all of the DNA within the cell constitutes its genome. Uh, prokaryotic cells usually have one single DNA molecule. Um, sometimes that can be in a circle or circular, uh, and we have referred to that in living environment as a plasmid. Uh, you, oh my, there's a typo there. Eukaryotic cells typically consist of a number of DNA molecules that are packaged together into chromosomes. And chromosomes consist of chromatin, which is DNA molecules and the attached proteins. So every eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of chromosomes in each cell in the nucleus. So if there's a different number of chromosomes, then we must be looking at a different species. Somatic cells which are non-reproductive cells. Formerly, we have referred to those as body cells. They have two sets of chromosomes, one that came from the mother and one that came from the father. Gametes are our reproductive cells, or our sperm and our eggs, and they have half as many chromosomes. So if you recall, that way, if half of the number of chromosomes an organism needs, and the other half come and they merge together, half plus a half gives a whole, so they would have one whole set of chromosomes after fertilization. In preparation for cell division, the DNA is replicated, so we can have an exact copy, and then the chromosomes begin to condense. So each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids. So when we're talking about a chromosome here, we're talking about the X, and each side of the X would be a chromatid, and because they are joined together, we refer to them as sister chromatids. So they are joined copies of the original chromosome, and those are going to separate during cell division. And the centromere is the point of attachment, or the narrow waist of the duplicated chromosome, where the two chromosomes are more to chromatids, I'm sorry, are most closely attached. So if you look here, we've got two sister chromatids. One of these was the original, and the other one is the copy. 
in here at this point right in the center where you can see they are closely attached, that is our center point. When the cell actually divides, the two sister chromatids of each duplicated chromosome is going to separate and move apart into two nuclei that will be in the two new cells that are formed. And once those chromatids separate, we now refer to them as chromosomes. So here we have a chromosome with a centromere. The chromosome duplicates, and then we call the point where they attach the centromere, see here? And then when these two divide, each side is called a sister chromatid, but then once they divide, we again refer to them as chromosomes. Eukaryotic division consists of two parts, mitosis and cytokinesis. So mitosis is the division of the genetic material in the nucleus. Um, in living environment, we, ref we refer to this as the division of the nucleus. And then cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm. Um, that kind of got tacked on to the last phase of mitosis in living environment. So gametes are produced by a variation of cell division called meiosis, which again is different from mitosis because if you recall, meiosis yields four cells. They are not genetically identical and they have only one set of chromosomes, which is half as many as the cell that began um, as the parent cell or the cell that we started with. All right, so let's talk about the cell cycle. So you're in a eukaryotic cell here, and the cell cycle is going to consist of a mitotic phase, or what we call the M phase. The M phase um, consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. And then interphase is the phase of cell growth, copying chromosomes. It's essentially the cell in its normal, normal life. So interphase takes up about 90% of the cell cycle. Um, and we can divide interphase into subphases. We call them first gap synthesis and second gap, or G1S and G2 phases. The cell is going to grow during all of these phases, but the chromosomes are only duplicated during the S phase. So synthesis means to build, so it makes sense that we are building more DNA during the synthesis phase. So here we go. Um, the mitotic M phase, as you can see, takes up roughly 10% of this entire cell cycle. So interphase is this other 90%, and interphase can then be broken down into three separate parts, G1, S, and G2. And at the end of the mitotic phase, this simply is telling you that you have two cells, and this cell is going to continue on in the cell cycle. And as a matter of fact, this one is two. It just doesn't really uh, look as neat and pretty when you have two cell cycles right next to each other because they would be forever cascading and you wouldn't get your point across. So um, mitosis is divided into five phases. We've always talked about it as being um, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, but prometaphase is another well-recognized um, phase. However, you have to consider that you can also have a prometaphase and a proanaphase and a protelophase. So depending on your expertise in the areas of cell division, you may have different phases that you refer to that are just simply more specific or part of each one of these five phases. So it's important to recognize that cytokinesis is going to overlap the latter stages of mitosis. So telophase and cytokinesis may be happening at the same time. Uh, for the AP exam, you do not need to know the names of the phases. However, I, they should already be familiar to you. And since they describe to some extent the actions of the chromosomes within the nucleus of the cell, it, it may be helpful for you to remember what they are. So here is a depiction of, of mitosis occurring. So here we have G2 of interphase right here. Now this is a picture taken of an actual cell that's, um, that's going through this process. And down here is, of course, an artist's rendering. So um, here we have the nucleus. Right? You can see that the nuclear envelope is starting to dissolve a little bit. You've got the centrosomes up here that start to move apart during prophase here. Um, as you can see, the chromosomes um, have already replicated, so there are two sister chromatids here. When the, um, when the centrioles here start to, start to move to opposite sides, 
Between them, part of the cytoskeleton forms something we call the mitotic spindle, and the, the mitotic spindle or the spindle fibers are what is actually responsible for moving the chromatids and separating them. So that's something important to know that we didn't focus on in living environment. When you look here, you can see that the chromosomes and promenophase are starting to align in the center of the cell, and each piece of the spindle fiber, now that we have no nuclear membrane here, or nuclear envelope, it's starting to attach at a kinetochore, which is typically where the centromere is. So once they're all lined up in the center of the plate, the, at the metaphase plate here, this is metaphase, and then they begin to pull apart anaphase, both begin with the letter A. Again, we've got the spindle fibers here attached to the kinetochore, pulling um, or these are actually shortening, which pull the chromosome closer towards the centriole. And then during telophase, the nuclear envelope starts to reform. This is, a, this is actually part of mitosis, but then that separate process, cytokinesis, here begins to overlap. And you can see that in an animal cell like this one, a cleavage furrow begins to form, and the cell begins to pinch in and eventually will divide. Now, do recall that in a plant cell, instead of a cleavage furrow forming, you have a cell plate that forms in the center um, and works its way towards the outside. Mitosis is a continuous orderly process. It always occurs within the same order or something goes wrong. So, for example, if two chromosomes don't separate into each, um, each new nucleus, then you don't end up with two identical daughter cells and then something else can happen because one cell is missing a chromosome or another cell has too many chromosomes. So there are certain structures that are always going to be observable during mitosis. The spindle fibers, the esters, the paired centrioles, and the chromosomes will always replicate during the S phase and interphase, and then they will align in the middle with one copy, one sister chromatid on each side of the metaphase plate, and then they will separate where the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles. In animals, cytokinesis occurs by cleavage, which is where we saw that pinching in, it forming a cleavage furrow, and then the two cells will eventually just form their own cell membranes. But in plant cells, we've got the cell plate, which forms during cytokinesis, as I had previously mentioned. So here is our cleavage furrow here, starting to pinch in until we have two separate daughter cells. And on this side, you can see there's a cell plate forming in this plant cell, which looks like this in the artist's rendering. So it starts to form a little bit in the center, and then once it is, I'm going to call it solid, for lack of a better way to say it, it kind of pushes out towards the end of the, towards the poles, I would say, and, um, and forms two separate daughter cells. So this is what nuclear, er, yeah, what nuclear, what a mitosis looks like in a plant cell. Um, you should have seen this when you did the onion root tip mitosis lab in living environment. Okay. So bacteria divide by binary fission, which is, um, kind of falls under the category of e uh, mitosis with equal cytoplasmic division. So prokaryotes like ba bacteria and archaea are going to reproduce by this binary fission. So in binary fission, we've got the chromosome, um, which will replicate. But remember, in prokaryotes, there aren't chromosomes. It's just w one chromosome. And sometimes it can even be circular. So at the point where replication begins, that's called the origin of replication. And then the two daughter chromosomes actively move apart. The plasma membrane will pinch inward, which divides the cell in two. So this is the difference, or this is the major difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So if you look here at the prokaryotes, you've got your circular bacterial chromosome, and then here is your origin of replication, where it starts to form two copies of the chromosome, uh, and then the cell will divide, and so there's one copy of each chromosome in each daughter cell. Well, we are going to stop here and talk about evolution of mitosis and some other information which may be newer to you um, in the next screencast.